my head for years I wanted to record. Um, I'm not a really prolific songwriter but I've written some songs because I've always had the idea that uh, every musician should be able to compose something even if it's just one song. And I had a number of songs that I'd written and I had some ideas of other songs that I wanted to record and it was in my head for years that someday I would make my own CD under my own name. I guess a year or two ago, I decided that when I wasn't uh, working with Downchild, uh, rather than waiting around for the phone to ring, because I do have a fairly good freelance career for playing with other people, getting hired to play bass with other bands and fill in and things like that but instead of uh, waiting for the phone to ring I would go out and book my own gigs as the Gary Kendall band. Through my entire career I've fluctuated between sideman and leader. I've had a few bands where I've been the leader of over the years and I kind of like that. I like being in down child. Um, I like going out and doing my own thing. So I actually started booking gigs as the Gary Kendall band and realized that well if I'm going to go out and play, these, especially these days, you need a recording. You need something to get gigs and just to validate your existence. So I wanted to record a CD and, you know, I'd been in here for years. So I just decided at the beginning of 2004 to start telling people that I'm going to record a CD this year. That way I'd have to keep my word, right? So I said, started telling people, I'm going to record a CD. That's my goal in 2004. Before the year's out, I'm going to release my own solo CD. And I didn't know how the hell I was going to get it done, but I was going to do it. And when this studio uh, came into existence, uh, existence um, Iridescent Studios, um, the man behind it all, who uh, put it together, likes to stay in the background, Phil Ball, uh, essentially said to me, you know, I'd asked me at one point if I ever was thought about recording my own CD and I said yes and he said, well, why don't you just do it? And at one point I came to him and told him I needed a little help with the studio time and he set me up in the studio and with uh, my friend uh, Steve Grisbrook was the engineer, so it just seemed perfect. to let it take it like most recordings do to let it take its own life and dictate where it was going to go you know uh, there's some songs that ended up on it that I had no intentions of recording um, some of the ones that maybe wouldn't be considered blues but they're roots music and I consider myself like a roots music player you know I play blues play bass and down child and I've always been in blues bands, but I've been exposed to so much music in my life that I just let them come out. I could have just come in and just played 12 bar blues with a small band, but um, I wanted to get out every idea that I have, and I think I managed to pretty good. Well, Dusty and Pearl, that's the two bases that span my career. The uh, Dusty is the Dusty Rose color or pink, uh, custom-made jazz bass. 
that I've been playing since 1985, and Pearl is the 1966 Fender Precision Bass that I played for 18 years or whatever prior to, to that. Um, and so, you know, there's, there's that, I needed a title, and they have sort of, they have today, have spanned my career and my life. They've always been there, you know, for, you know, uh, Mike Pearl, the old bass, is kind of like a member of the family, you know. Uh, she doesn't even go out much anymore, she sort of stays home, you know. I preserve that bass for studio work and only occasionally take it to a gig. And the other one, which is called Dusty, is really my main working instrument that if anyone comes to see me play live, they probably see me play on that. to record a, your own CD is a pretty positive thing, you know, it's to be able to just be able to do it and, and to be helped do it, you know, iridescent music were extremely helpful, uh, Steve Grisbrook, who engineered it and played on songs was extremely helpful. Um, as everybody who, who played on it, you know, Teddy Leonard played a lot of guitar on it, and uh, he was a big help, Brian Fraser, and the drummers, Mike Fitzpatrick, Tyler Burgess, and Jim Cassidy. Uh, you know, every, every musician that I called to ask to play on it said things like, uh, it would be an honor, or I'd be thrilled, or I'd be glad to, sure, you know. Um, and they all gave me a cut rate on their studio fees as well. Uh, and they, um, they all gave me input on different things, you know, and they, they all came with ideas. Um, so that's very important, you know. I, I, I know a lot of players, and I, 33 people, as I say, helped me make that CD. And there's probably another 20 that I didn't get to get on them. But, I, you know, you can only fit so many people in. Um, so I probably could have even involved more people in it, but I mean, that wasn't to be maybe on the next one.